Hey there. Do you have a looming brick wall in your path that you just can't seem to find a way to break through? Well, in this video, I want to talk about one of my favorite strategies for brick wall busting. It's the fan club, sometimes also referred to as cluster research. Now, I've used this strategy on numerous projects for myself and for my clients, and I've been helping my students learn how to implement this strategy to solve their tough research problems. So I thought I'd share a few pointers with you. Now, if you don't already know me, I'm Julie Cahill Tarr with Genealogy in Action, and I simplify advanced genealogy research concepts so you can chase down your elusive ancestors quickly and confidently. So if you're a dedicated genealogist looking to uplevel your research skills, you're in the right place. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about what the fan club is and why it needs to be a part of your genealogy toolbox. And be sure to stick around until the end where I'll share six different places you can look for fan club members so you can start tackling that brick wall today. Now, the fan club is a phrase coined by Elizabeth Schoen Mills that stands for family, associates, and neighbors. And those are the people that make up a person's network. Now, over the years, the F has come to include friends, but it's important not to omit family from the equation. And friends, in my opinion, are associates. Anyways, this network or fan club is important because remember, our ancestors didn't live in a bubble. They interacted with family and friends, members of their community, church, and organizations, as well as their neighbors. So it's these people that could hold the answers or clues to your research questions. So studying them is just as important and sometimes even more important than studying your person of interest. So like in the simplest of terms, one way to solve a paternity question is to study the target person's siblings. If you can prove the sibling relationship, you can indirectly tie the sibling's mother and or father to the target person. Another simple scenario is studying the people around the target person um, to find a place of origin. Now, this works well with immigrant ancestors, but it also works with migrating folks. So since people tended to relocate together, the people in a community may have come from the same community elsewhere. For example, if I didn't already know that my Webster and Parks families that ended up in Oakland County, Michigan, at one point lived in Cuyahoga County, New York, I would have been able to track them by studying the people they associated with in Michigan, as nearly all of their associates, neighbors, and in-laws also resided in Cuyahoga County, New York, prior to settling near one another in Oakland County, Michigan. And the fan club can also be used to sort out people of the same name in the same place because their fan clubs will be made up of made up of different people. So think about it this way. If you're stuck on a question of identity, relationship, origin, or even other types of questions, you really need to start looking at the people around your target person. And yes, this does mean more work because you'll have to be doing actual research on these people. But in many cases, it'll be worth worth it in the end, and you'll be doing the genealogy happy dance. Now, unfortunately, these folks didn't have things like social media to make finding their associates an easy task. So how do we find these potential fan club members? Well, here are six places you can look that typically yield great results. First, censuses are a great place to look for those neighbors and the people living in the community, especially others with the same surname, assuming it's not something like Smith. Now, for rural folks, I like to look at like five to seven households above and below my target person. 
And for my city folks, I like to actually map out the block so that I can look for people across the street, on both side streets, and on the street behind them. And you'd be surprised how many connections I have made by taking the time to do this. And keep in mind that you may have to look in more than one enumeration district to find those neighbors. Uh, next up is civil marriage records, which can provide the witnesses to the marriage. These witnesses were typically uh, family or close friends and should be added to your targets, uh, target person's fan club. Church records uh, tend to provide a wealth of information and are especially useful for fan club members. Look for witnesses to marriages and baptisms as they were likely family or close friends. And I also like to look at records for my surnames during the same period my family attended the church. And I also like to look for my family members who were witnesses to other people's events as they make good fan club members too. Cemeteries. Cemeteries can provide valuable information. Pay attention to the gravestones near where your target person is buried because they might be associated in some way. Also, if you're able to get a list of burials in the family plot, be sure to ask for a copy, especially when there are no gravestones. You'll be able to see who else is buried there and may even find out who purchased the plot and when, which could be a helpful clue. Um, military pensions can be a goldmine of fan club members. And you'll want to pay attention to anyone who provided affidavits because that person had some sort of knowledge about the person of interest. They could be a family member, associates, other veterans, in-laws, and even the minister who performed the marriage ceremony when this needs to be proven for qualifying for a pension. And finally, land records. Now, there are a lot of different types in this category that you could use, but let's talk about a couple of them to get you started. Deeds can note the name of adjacent neighbors, and the witnesses listed could be friends or family. Identifying the person who provided a mortgage could also be a good strategy as there could be some sort of connection there. And land ownership maps are one of my favorite sources because they show you all the nearby neighbors in one fell swoop. Now that you can see the value in studying the people connected to your person of interest, it's time to put this in practice. Pick one of your brick walls and start going through the records you already have to begin identifying the other people mentioned in the record. Pay attention to the six record types I just mentioned, but don't overlook other records you have, such as um, probate records, guardianship records, um, obituaries, naturalization records, passengership lists, um, any type of record that has someone else named on it, use it. <laughs> Um, and to keep track of the fan members, you can just make a simple list of these people and be sure to note their association to the target person. And when you finish your list, take some time to study it. Look for the people that pop up multiple times, especially across different types of records. These are the people you'll want to study further. Pick the most promising lead and with your research question on your target person in mind, kind of build a plan um, to research that fan club member further and hopefully you'll be able to uncover the answer you seek about your target person or at least some clues to follow up on. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you're ready to build a fan club list of one of your brick wall ancestors so you can start to break down those bricks. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe using the button below and click the little bell so you'll be notified when new videos are released. Bye for now.